Hello everyone, welcome back to 3DX. In today's video, I'm going to be creating a stylized park bench. So let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see here, I'm going to start out by creating the shapes using a CV curve tool. And the reason I'm going to do this is because I want to create the, uh, the side of the bench itself, just the shape itself, uh, without having to use polygons for that as my starting point. I just find that using these curves just made it a lot easier to do something like this, especially the uh, areas where there's like a bit of a curvature to the shape. So I used that and then I also did an extrusion along the curve by using a, a circle nerve uh, shape. And then after that, after I had the shapes that I liked, I deleted the mostly the uh, geo except for like the side and I just scaled that so that it was completely flat and then I just kind of welded everything together. This is one of those cases where just welding things has made it a lot easier to work with. Especially because I want to extrude this whole thing as one shape and so welding it uh, just made it a lot easier. So like I mentioned, I'm mostly creating uh, the side view of the uh, bench here. And by welding all the pieces, it just makes it a lot easier to work with. And then I just extrude, uh, made an extrusion for it so that it has some thickness. And I started creating some of the wood planks, which are pretty much just a rectangle. And then I'm just adding a few more details to the uh, side here, just so that it's not perfectly uh, straight and has a little bit more interest to it. Then I'm adding some metallic pieces, which uh, connect uh, the whole thing together. And I also applied some materials just to preview it, uh, just to see what it would look like with some color. Sometimes it's good to do this, uh, to have just some um, base materials to the shapes so that you can see what it's somewhat going to look like once you actually texture it. Obviously it's just to preview it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bevel to it. This is also so that the lighting catches a little bit more detail when it's uh, lit. And I also added a bevel to the uh, planks as well. I just thought it would look cool if it had a bevel as well. And now what I'm going to do is add some UVs. And for this mostly I'm just going to break it up uh, in some of the close to 90 degree angle changes for the geo. Some parts I also broke up a little bit more just so that I could fit them better in the UV space. And I also decided that I was going to have the main uh, metallic piece. I was going to mirror it so that it's uh, symmetrical. That was the original idea, but then I decided that I was just gonna not do that just because there was a uh, leftover space in the UVs anyway, in the UV uh, quadrant anyway, so might as well uh, not do the mirror part in this case. So whenever you have space in the UV quadrant, uh, you might as well use that space, and not let it go to waste. Now this metallic piece is going to be overlapping. It's going to be sharing the same UVs as the main handle or side of the bench. And then for the high poly, I'm just going to duplicate the original low poly group. Um, add a few more details here and then 
going to export this to ZBrush and just add a few more scratches and stuff like that in ZBrush. Notice that I'm using uh, name matching, uh, so the names for the high poly and the low poly match for each piece. This way I can bake by name in Substance Painter. I'm also going to export some of these pieces in sub D mode. And export the low poly as well. So in ZBrush, I loaded up the uh, high poly model. Notice that I also used the C plugin and imported it as an FPX file. This is so that my groups stay intact and the same as they were in Maya. So here I'm going to be using some of the ore brushes. Uh, those brushes you can just find online if you could go to I'll just do a Google search for uh, or brush pack. So I'm going to add a few scratches. Some of these details are not very realistic, obviously. I just want to add some areas of interest. Then I'm going to do some sculpting for the wood as well. And I'm still going to use uh, some of those orb uh, brushes, so in this case the orb crack brush. We're going to do the same with the other plank. And just making sure that some of the wood fibers are a little bit irregular and they're not just straight lines. Again, just to add a little bit more interest. And as always, I would highly recommend you guys spend way more time uh, with the details here. For these videos, I typically um, don't spend as much time as I should, especially when it comes to polishing the final model and sculpt. So one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to fill the object with some different colors and this is going to be my ID map. I'm using a plugin for this, uh, if you're interested in that there's a link in the video description but you don't really have to use it, you can just do this manually as well. And in Substance Painter I'm going to bake all my maps. So here in Substance Painter, I'm using the uh, 3DX Stylist uh, Smart Material. If you're interested in learning how to make it, there's a link in the video description as well. But I'm going to be using that and adding a few different layers here, just to add some more details to the bench itself. Especially the wood, I wanted to make it look um, not completely... Well, I wanted to look clean, but not super clean. So I'm just adding a few more um, color variation to the edges, especially. So here's what it looks like in Marmosa Toolbag. So if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and I'll hopefully see you in a future video. All right, later. Do you see this environment right here? I made this really quickly using Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter and Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. You too can make something like this really easily and in a short period of time. To make an environment like this one, all you have to do is make a few simple props, put them together in Unreal and then simply add some lights and you're pretty much done. So hey, this is only a 45 second ad so that there's not enough time for me to cover everything. So click on the link below now and I will show you exactly how I made this environment. The best thing about learning how to make an environment like this one is that you can simply use the same techniques to pretty much make any other type of environment. Oh, and by the way, you don't need to be an expert already in order to learn how to make something like this. You can follow along without any prior knowledge. I will be showing you the basics on how to use Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, Substance Designer and Unreal Engine so you can follow along without any issue. Like I said, this is a very short video so I don't have enough time to explain everything, so click on that link below and I will show you exactly how this is done. And by the way, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this for, so click on that link now so you don't miss out.